occurs in industrial design, generating the basis functions, the Cox de Boer formula. The basis functions of a uniform cubic B spline can be constructed from its knot vector. Every B spline basis function is a non negative piecewise polynomial function. The basis functions of order 0 are constant or piecewise constant functions. Each basis function of order n is obtained recursively from two basis, fu basis functions of order n minus 1. The recursion formula is known as the Cox de Boer formula. The Cox de Boer recurrence starts with basis functions of order 0, whose support is the interval defined by two consecutive knots of the knot vector. Each basis function of order 1 is obtained from two consecutive functions of order 0. Its support is the union of the supports of the generating functions. Each basis function of order 2 is obtained from two consecutive functions of order 1, its support being the union of their supports, and so forth up to the required order, usually order 3. This recursion is depicted schematically in the diagram below. It's convenient to relabel the knots. The first knot is called tau sub 0, the second knot tau sub 1, and so forth, up to tau sub t. The Cox de Boer recurrence formula then expresses the basis function k sub n as a linear combination of the basis functions with indices k n minus 1 and k plus 1 n minus 1, and coefficients that are expressed in terms of the relabeled knots. The knots in the denominator of the coefficient of a basis function are the endpoints of that basis function support. The new basis function support is the union of the supports of the two from which it is built. If the denominator is zero, that is, the two knots appearing in the denominator are the same, then the basis function is also zero, and the sum end is omitted. The basis functions of order zero are defined to be one when t takes a value between the knot tau sub k and the knot tau sub k plus one, and zero otherwise. If the two consecutive knots coincide, then the basis function is defined to be zero for all time. To be specific, we consider the knot vector formed by four zeros, a one, a two, and four threes. Since the first two knots are the same, the first basis function is identically equal to zero. The same is true for the second basis function and the third basis function. Finally, the fourth basis function is, is not identically zero. It's equal to 1 between 0 and 1, and 0 outside of that interval. The second basis function has the same shape, but it's equal to 1 in the interval 1 to 2, and 0 outside of that interval. The third basis function has again the same shape, but it's displaced one more step to the right. And the remaining basis functions are all identically 0, because the corresponding knots are repeated. By the Cox board recursion, two consecutive basis functions of order 0 generate a basis function of order 1. Its support is the union of the supports of the two functions that generate it. The basis functions of order 1 are piecewise linear functions, or identically 0. Said in another way, they are piecewise polynomial functions of degree no greater than 1. Here we see the result of the Cox board formula when applied to two basis functions of order 1, of order 0. The resulting basis function of order 1 is piecewise linear, supported on the interval 0, 1. Here we see the result of applying the Cox -Boer de Boer formula to two basis functions of order 0, supported on different intervals. The result again is a piecewise linear function supported on the union of the intervals on which the two generating functions were supported. The basis functions of order 1 are piecewise linear functions whose, supports are, whose support is an interval with endpoints two knots that are one knot apart. If, if the two knots are the same, then the function is identically zero. For the knot vector considered before, we see that the first two basis functions are identically zero because they correspond to repeated knots. And it's the third basis function which is no longer zero, corresponding to the knots zero and one. As we go advancing through the vector, 
we see how the basis functions change their shape until again we begin repeating knots and the basis functions are identically zero. The cox bohr recursion assigns to two consecutive basis functions of order one a basis function of order two. It supports the union of the supports of the two functions that generate it. The basis functions of order two are piecewise quadratic functions or identically zero. That is, they are piecewise polynomial functions of degree at most two. Here we see the result of combining two basis functions of order one, supported one on the interval zero to one and the other identically zero. The resulting basis function of order two is supported again on the interval zero to one. Here we see the result of combining two basis functions of order one with different supports. One is supported on the interval zero to one, the other is supported on the interval zero to two. The resulting order two basis function has support in the interval zero to two. The basis functions of order two are piecewise quadratic functions whose support is in an interval with endpoints two knots that are two knots apart. If the two knots are the same, then the function is zero. Again, considering the same knot vector, the first basis function corresponding to the first to the first knot and the fourth knot, which are separated by two knots, is identically zero. But the second basis function already is not identically zero. And we see how the basis functions evolve as we pass through the knot vector. The basis functions of order three are piecewise cubic functions whose support is an interval with endpoints two knots that are three knots apart. For the same knot vector, now any two knots which are three knots apart are not repeated. So none of the basis functions is identically zero.